Hello again. In the last video that I did, I talked about alternative tunings. And one of the things that I covered in that is the idea of drop tuning. Tuning the strings on the guitar to a lower note than you normally would. Give you a much heavier sound, very useful for rock, heavy metal. And that kind of inspired me because I haven't done a whole lot of like heavy uh, detuned stuff for a while. So I went out and got myself a set of uh, 11 to 54 strings. No, normally I play 9 to 42s, so like a light sort of gauge. Um, but 11 to 54 is a good bit heavier and I thought for change I'll get the HM Strat, it's a Fender HM Strat as the name suggests, designed for heavy metal although it is quite versatile, it, it's uh, useful for a lot of things uh, it's designed for heavy metal so I thought I'll spend a bit of time tuning, uh, setting it up with 11 to 54s and tuning it down to drop D because this is set with a floating trem, locking floating trem uh, the balance between the springs inside the tremolo cavity and the tension in the strings needs to balance out so even with a, a lower tuning the he for the heavy to compensate for the heavier strings i still needed to put an extra spring in the, the tremolo cavity and balance the tremolo so in total it probably took us about an hour so it's you know longer than it would have taken me if i was using a stop tail piece guitar like that one but uh, i thought it's worthwhile because i haven't uh, haven't actually played this guitar very much recently and the reason I'm making this as like a follow-up video is to talk about ways to get the most out of your drop tuned experience it's not just about tuning the guitar down say to a, a D tuning there's some other things you can do to enhance your sound to get the most out of it obviously we're going to play something with a, an overdriven sound so this is the sound I'm using at the minute with the guitar. This is drop tuned down to uh, D. It's regular. It's if you like, it's regular tuning, but each string's tuned down by two semitones. So instead of E A D G B E, I've got D G C F A and D, and that gives me a, a heavier sound than I would normally get. nice. In terms of the sound I'm using it's just the dirty channel on my amp. It's a Blackstar HT5 and I've got the overdrive the gain set to about 7. It's a bit uh, more gain than I would normally use. You need to be careful with the overdrive channel on an amp, the distortion channel on an amp or if you're using you know, stomp boxes or whatever to give you your, your dirty sound. It's very easy to overdo the distortion. So don't just whack the gain up to 10 and think that'll do because it, it can run the risk of getting a bit um, a bit muddy so something's backing off the gain actually gives you a gives you a better sound also in terms of EQ in terms of what the way I've got the tone control set uh, bass in the mid are probably at about 7 and I think the trebles is about number 6 I always have a bit of reverb on my sound and that's basically the way I've got, like, I've got the amp set up. Nowadays, amplifier manufacturers are getting a lot better at giving you just a whole bunch of usable tones. I remember when I first started buying amplifiers years ago, the, you know, there'd be sounds available at one end of the, the, the range of the knob or at the other end of the range where it was, it was too extreme really, it was unusable. Nowadays, the, the sounds that you get from an amp Generally, they're, they're, they're usable across the across the board. If you've got an older amp, though, uh, you might find that there's some some more extreme settings that you'll you'll need to kind of just kind of just stay away from. It's like I was saying before: don't just turn the gain and everything up to ten. I think that'll do. It, you might find it's a, it's a bit over the top. Let your ears guide you. In terms of the the tone as well, one uh, thing you can you can think about is what you do with the mid range. Now I've got quite a bit of mid-range in the sound here, I quite like the way it sounds. Um, there's this, an idea I think, called a scooped sound, where if you can imagine your, your EQ settings having all the, the bass, then all the mids scooped out, and then the treble. If you imagine looking at the graphic equaliser, it would be like a V sort of shape. Um, if you want a good example of that sound, listen to uh, something like uh, Metallica. Uh, their guitar sounds quite heavily what you call scooped where you're taking the mid-range out. It still sounds heavy because you've got the bottom end uh, 
to give it some some real thickness but there's still some treble there for to give it the, give the sound some bite you know again like I say use let your ears guide you but uh, it's something you might want to experiment with in terms of filling out the sound the only effects that I've got in play here um, I've got a box called a sonic stomp uh, it's like a, an enhancer if you're interested I've already done a review sort of overview of that which I'll put a link down there in the information section on uh, YouTube if you're interested in seeing what that box does but basically this is the sound without the sonic stomp and this is the sound with it's quite a subtle effect it just makes the, the, the sound a little bit more alive I think uh, only other effect I'm using is digital delay um, just to give me an echo on the sound so this is the sound without the digital delay so you can hear it cuts off when I when I kill the note you just get that little bit of echo from the reverb on the amp but with the delay you can hear the the thing repeating there and again it's just a personal preference thing I like a, a bit of echo delay on the the signal just I think it just makes the sound bigger okay so that's the the signal chain and the way the sounds getting processed let's talk a bit now about playing now you probably noticed quite a few of the bits I was playing there I'm using palm muting and in palm muting what you do is you take the fleshy part at the side of your hand and you rest that on the string on the string so they don't they don't sound out so playing a chord normally or you put your hand down just to deaden the strings the strings don't vibrate you get a quite a percussive sound now you wouldn't use that all the time but I'll play something now without palm muting and then use the palm muting so you can hear the difference and you see what, why it's so effective now with palm muting so you can hear the difference that that bit of palm muting make, makes to the sound uh, the chords when you play them so like really matter and, and you get them much more effective because like on the off beats you just got that that rhythmic chug you can still hear the, the chord that's being played so you can tell the difference between and but the notes aren't actually ringing out so if you haven't tried palm muting before uh, it really is useful for you for your rhythm playing so I'd uh, encourage you to spend a bit of time really it's just about getting the palm fleshy part of your, the side of your hand just resting on the strings if you've got a floating tremolo like this be careful that you don't lean on the the bridge too much because you can actually start like push the trem down and then uh, make the guitar go out of tune slightly so just very slight pressure just enough to stop the strings from ringing out now let's talk a little bit about note selection want to play something heavy so we'll be playing things probably around a minor key and to give you that big sound I'm concentrating on playing things where I can let that bottom what's the bottom D string now because I'm detuned use that and letting it ring out so here's an example what I'm doing is I'm playing in the key of D remember, remember this guitar is tuned down so it might look like I'm playing an E chord here but because I'm tuned down by two semitones this is actually a D so I'm playing a D chord over a D bass note then C chord over a D bass note B flat chord over a D bass note and then so you can just go down to the 5 chord the, uh, in this case the A so why I think that one that idea works is because you've got that big heavy chugging uh, tonic note going on all the time 
something maybe a bit more like riff type of bass, but going around just using power chords. Any chords I'm, I'm using as examples in this, this video, they're all going to be based around power chords, one and five degrees. If you, again, if you haven't come across power chords, I have done a tutorial on them, and I'll put a link down there in the information section on YouTube if you want to follow that up. Certain intervals and certain chord tones within a, a, within a key that give you heavier sounds than others. Ones that I find work particularly well are the flat six chord and also the flat five chord. Now the flat five chord isn't diatonic to uh, the natural minor. The flat five you might come across in like the blue scale. Uh, but the interval of a, what's called a diminished fifth, six semitones, sounds particularly strange and unresolved. And traditional classical music was something called the devil's interval because it sounds so so dark and strange. But for heavy metal music, and this you'll hear a lot, and uh, if you listen to riffs, people like you know Ozzy and Black Sabbath uh, have that sequence. You've got the one chord and the five chord. It's not necessarily a chord to resolve on. But if you rest on it, you can really get some tension and make the piece want to go, go forward. The other chord that I find works quite well is the flat 6 chord. So if we're just playing in the key of D here, flat 6 chord would be here. So that's quite a heavy dark sound sort of interval. Again, probably not one to, to rest on, uh, to resolve, to finish a, 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 a piece, but it's a, quite a nice one to rest on to give you some tension and for the piece to want to go forward. So let's just try playing something with those flat five, flat six, six chord ideas in, so you can hear the sound. <laughs> Again, concentrating on the min on the natural minor, so you will notice I had a, a flat third in there, a strong natural minor sound. Another idea is to do something with like abrupt pauses, something like this. Again, all I'm trying to do here is just give you a few ideas. And as always, I'd encourage you to go off and experiment on your own. You know, look at the natural minor. It's a good starting point for you know for heavy rock. Think about the way you've got your your sound dialed in. You know how you're using distortion and EQ, and you know what effects you use. Like I say, the main effect that I'm using here is the the digital delay. If you've got one of those, you like the sound of it, use it. If not, it's it's just an idea. You you know your your personal sound might be something different or you might have some some other effects in the chain that you like to use and here I'm just giving you some ideas importantly though if you want that heavy sound it's about drop tuning and what this video is really trying to show you is how to get the most out of that drop tune experience to give you the best sort of heavy riff type of uh, sound that you can get so there you go a few ideas have fun with that keep practicing and I'll see you in another video sometime soon bye for now